All right, let's take a look at uh, my favorite program, and it's in its uh, new grayer form here for the uh, Flash Professional CC launch. That's actually going to be one of the first things I uh, I change preference wise because you know what, I don't really like uh, my software looking like uh, you know it's. Uh, part of the spaceship Prometheus or something like that. It's a little too gray for me. Even though I do have a gray desktop ba desktop background, I don't uh, I don't really prefer There we go. It just feels a little bit better. And uh, let's fix this. I've I've done this in, in I <laughs> the past few versions of Flash. Quickly go over here to the classic settings and then everything uh, makes a little bit more sense again. I hate having a single stack of uh, icons over here. That uh, that drives me crazy as well. And let's go ahead and just create a, a new document. And already things are uh, looking a little bit back to normal here with um, my old favorite program. And of course, one reason I have to uh, double stack these icons as well is just uh, for the screen capture space. But, uh, otherwise, they kind of drip down here to the bottom and you guys can't see them and if this is your first time using uh, flash well I know you probably feel like a deer in uh, the headlights right now uh, using any software for the first time is a little bit intimidating but um, well how can I put this you're gonna basically live right here with these windows okay so um, what you see is is the space that you're gonna be working in and um, there's no kind of like hidden layer of, uh, you know, there's not like a 3D mode that we can suddenly jump into uh, to drastically change what you're looking at. This is, this is pretty much it. So you've got, you, you know, your toolbars, which we just talked about. You've got your timeline here where, you, where we can do animation. Right now we're just on frame one, but we can create lots of different layers and kind of work our way out here, changing things in um, our stage, our main scene. And um, other than that, we've got our properties window, uh, which is used to obviously change the properties of things that we have drawn on the stage here. Uh, things like uh, blurring, the size, um, other things like that. We can, you know, obviously we can type in size values uh, versus uh, manipulating them with the uh, the tools over here. And you've got um, some pop out windows like this. Um, I kind of keep a concise workspace because, um, well, just at least when I'm screen capturing these these videos. I tend not to have lots of other windows floating around so these are all kind of tucked in right over here and a lot of these I don't even go to because some of them are, are a bit redundant um, in terms of uh, like this transform stuff a lot of that same um, those, those same options show up over here in our properties window um, so don't feel over intimidated by all these other little sub windows um, and then you've got your library here and I've already kind of created a couple of symbols uh, that I was playing around with just to see what little tiny things were different with the program uh, but uh, and then uh, otherwise there's there's really just kinda like one other tabbed uh, uh, window that might show up over here when we're animating uh, that we'd make use of but there's a there's not a lot of hidden stuff that um, that you're not seeing right here so I'm trying to kinda simplify things for you make you feel a little bit more comfortable with it and of course um, I, I don't want to leave out that you, you can do a lot of coding in here so there's your uh, your actions that can show up but that's a whole different world if we're going to be looking at uh, mostly let's say animating and illustrating you don't really have to get into your actions uh, for for that type stuff now let's set up some of the preferences here's one I find to be pretty essential and uh, you might disagree it, it kind of depends on the program that you're coming from but uh, go over here to preferences and let's actually know before I even show you this let me show you why I'm setting this up uh, what I'm gonna do is make these into symbols you don't even really have to know what that means right now don't feel like you need to follow along right at this moment because what I'm showing you is just this selection preference uh, watch what happens now so I'm basically just gonna take this arrow tool and just run a, a a box over it or a selection you know outline over top of these and it selects both of them uh, what I prefer is that I have to select the entirety of both of them uh, for it to select them okay uh, so I think this is a, just gives me a little bit more flexibility to kind of just run a, a big old box around these and I know that if I let go right here it's only gonna end up selecting the red one okay because I didn't select all of the blue one alright 
but as it is now, it's going to select both of those guys. And that's just an easy switch. I'm just going to go over here to preferences. And uh, thank goodness this is still an option because I, um, I really prefer it like this. So I'm going to toggle that off, click OK. And uh, now you can see it's only selected that one. So we'll come back to what the movie clips and all that stuff are later. Uh, let's uh, Now let's go over here to uh, our keyboard shortcuts. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is, um, and this is optional, I think, for anybody new coming to the program, but uh, since I've been using the, the program for about 13 years, I, I just can't seem to get used to um, the, the default hotkeys now for these uh, two arrows, uh, two selection arrows. So I'm going to switch them back to what I was uh, kind of originally trained on back at uh, Jedi School. And I'm going to go over here to Tool. This is going to be... All right, so the sub selection, I want this to be V, and I want my main selection arrow, which is that black one right there. I want that to be A. So just a personal preference of mine, and then we'll take that off. And I, I never used the shift version of that. I didn't even know that that was an option. So just A and V now are set to um, V goes to the sub selection one, which in my illustration, when I illustrate, I don't actually use that that often. So I'm going to go over here and... Uh, my nice little go-to be that uh, my ring finger, the A tool. And now let's get to some, uh, I think, more essential keyboard shortcuts. And that will be over, let's go over here, transform, uh, scale and rotate. I've always felt better uh, with this just being the, um, the Apple R, or if you're on the... Uh, PC, I guess uh, you can kind of choose your own, but probably I'd go with Control R. Uh, right now, it's this option uh, Apple Key S, which I think is just a little bit too much for such a for a key that I think you can use just all the time. So scale and rotate. I'm going to uh, turn that off and then just add another one, which is just going to be there. You go the Apple Key R, and uh, what it's going to tell me now is is already in use for the command uh, import to stage. I just haven't felt like you really need a hotkey for import to stage. You don't do it that often, so let's just click OK. And uh, now so let's go over here and just click that. You get this uh, scale and rotate box, which uh, you know a lot of times you're just trying to resize something. You just want to go. I, I know I needed about it half, right? And then you can kind of finesse it from there. And the same thing is is very nice. I think if you're just going to rotate something, you know, like 45 degrees. All right, for these uh, next two shortcuts, I want to show you. Uh, you should, I guess, know a little bit more about uh, creating symbols. And uh, first off, let's just go, well, let's change things up a little bit. We've had squares before in our library. Let's make a circle here. And why not? We'll change the color as well. All right, so I've got this uh, green circle that I'm just drawing down here on the stage. And uh, when I select it, you kind of see this uh, kind of selection pattern within the, uh, the actual shape here. That's a good indication that this has not been made into a symbol. If it were a symbol, and I'll do this the quickest way possible, I think uh, if you hit F8, it will say convert to symbol and we'll just call this uh, circle so it's named a little bit uh, more appropriately and you can see that now I've got that circle in uh, my library um, the hotkeys that I want to set up are um, two I'm gonna do one for duplicating this symbol which is different than a, co a copy and paste of it and then the other one would be um, to uh, swap this symbol out with uh, another one that is uh, inside of the library which is kind of essential for animation. Uh, a lot of times when you're animating you'll want to swap a symbol or you know a little container of artwork uh, for something similar to it and oftentimes it'll be named something similar so it's just very easy to, to hit a hotkey instead of um, kind of the slower way of doing that would be to maybe delete this off the stage and drag another symbol in its place and kind of ar arrange it like so. Uh, if we can just do this by um, a simple prompt which you'll see in a moment it is much easier. And uh, let's go back though and, and talk about the, the first one we'll set up, which is duplicate symbol. And um, to kind of illustrate why this is an important one, what I'm going to do is just uh, copy and paste out this um, the same symbol. I'm going to double click inside of here so I can go back and edit the original artwork that I set up. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just kind of select a big chunk of this and uh, delete it. Now look, that did that to both of those symbols, all right? And it, it also did it to the one inside of the library there. That's a good thing. That's it's kind of one of the fundamentals of uh, Flash. All right, 
um, change one symbol, it's going to change all of them. Uh, unless we were to make it into a unique symbol and that's um, what our duplicate symbol uh, option is going to do. So duplicate is, is unfortunately it's named um, like copy and paste. You think okay well it's just going to copy and paste it like that but a duplicate symbol is going to make a unique instance of it and uh, to do that we could go over here to modify bitmap oh I'm sorry modify symbol duplicate symbol now it's going to say hey look at this give us a new name for it alright so symbol 2 alright click OK now if I were to double click inside of here and kinda of make this into a Pac-Man it's not affecting that original one and of course I've got two of them in the uh, the library now so that's why I think it's important to have a, a dedicated uh, hotkey for that so let's go over here to keyboard shortcuts and come down here to symbol duplicate symbol going to add one and um, I'm going to use the um, the Apple key and uh, D D for duplicate now look at this it says the shortcut um, Apple D was already in use for command edit duplicate now that, that's some kind of bad naming right there <laughs> so there's there's two commands in the program duplicate and duplicate symbol alright so maybe the other one should be named something like make unique instance or something like that I just don't find it uh, very useful to have a a dedicated hotkey for just duplicating okay because I you know everyone's very familiar with doing their copy and paste from every other program in existence um, which is all that this does right here um, so I'm gonna overwrite that I'm gonna click OK and uh, then go back over here to keyboard shortcuts again and scroll on down to symbol Let's go and uh, add this swap symbol, and I'm going to hit the uh, Apple key again and, and do G again. If you're on the PC, you can uh, do Control G probably. And uh, yet again, I get another warning here. It says uh, the shortcut uh, Apple G was already in use for the command modify group, and I really intentionally want to get rid of that because I hate grouping anything in Flash and. Um, I can kind of explain why, but um, if you're if you're used to grouping things in programs like Illustrator, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, I have no problem with grouping things, but grouping things in Flash is uh, is kind of counterintuitive for uh, animation and making use of this um, kind of well cutout style animation in Flash, uh, where we rely on uh, things like symbols and uh, unique instances uh, in grouping uh, I guess I'll have to just kind of show it to you explain it to you but first let's focus back on um, what we just did here which was uh, create that uh, hotkey so now I'm gonna hit uh, oh whoops I don't I don't think it convinced to symbol I don't think it was convinced that I uh, set that hotkey yet. Let's go back to it. Oh, it replaces it. All right. Well, looks like I got it. Let's try it again. Okay. Oh well, for some reason, it doesn't want to work on there, and I, and I think I know why. <laughs> Because when I was testing things out, I actually ended up grouping it. All right, so there's another reason why grouping is is not. I'm not a fan of it. All right, so here we go. We'll do it on an actual symbol here. So Apple G, great. I was like worried there was a bug there in the program. So now it's gonna say swap symbol, right? So now I can go and swap it out with another similar symbol symbol in that exact same place. All right, so I don't have to worry about dragging something out of the library and uh, repositioning it. And if I want to go back to it. There we go. Now think about that if you're doing like a lip sync animation, how easy it would be to just change out different mouth poses. Okay, so you might have mouth one, mouth two, mouth three, mouth four, and then just kind of go down here and click out the one that you want. All right. Um, and uh, let me explain further the problem with uh, uh, grouping. So here we've got, let's just, I'm going to, I'm going to hit, um, a hockey that I'm not going to change. <laughs> Apple B or uh, what is the uh, uh, let's see shape. Let's see, I'm so used to finding these um, or 
I'm sorry. There it is. It's a break apart. So whatever this is on the PC for you guys, check it with that hotkey. Uh, it's probably just Control B, and that's gonna basically take a symbol and just break it back apart to its uh, original artwork. All right. So here I'm gonna go now and um, I'm gonna find group. And I, I rarely ever use it, so I don't even. I'm sure. I'm sorry. I never actually use it. Go to group, and. Then I'm going to hit F6, which is going to create a hotkey for all the stuff on here. So it's just going to basically make a um, a note where everything is. And if I were to move things, for example, move them over here, uh, they're now at a unique position versus where they were at at frame one. All right, so that's what a keyframe is. I can do the same thing uh, over here. And now, if I were to go. And change this like so. Go back to it. It's going to go back to the um, the artwork that it was originally keyframed at. And you know, some somebody might say, "Well, that's a good thing, right?" <laughs> it is, and it isn't. And I think most of the time, it isn't a good thing. All right, because what if? What if this was um, the artwork from, I don't know, the a character's head, right? Let's say it's Homer Simpson's head. And you've done all this keyframing throughout here. And you've got uh, basically the, you know, minute changes on um, Homer's head, okay? And uh, the only thing that you've changed for the most part is maybe say the, the mouth and all these frames. It could be a pose like this, a side view, right? And uh, uh, then uh, Matt Groening comes in and goes, you know what, I've decided that uh, Homer should have had hair the entire time. For the entire run of The Simpsons, he, he really should have, shouldn't have been bald. He should have had hair. Okay, now if that was a symbol, you could have just gone back into the original symbol and painted in the hair and uh, you would have been good to go. But if it was grouped, you'd have to go back through here, double click into all this artwork, paint in the hair, go to the next frame, paint in the hair, and so on like that. So um, you want to make use of this, what we'll call like a symbolology in uh, Flash. And um, so I'd say if, uh, if you're coming from something like Adobe Illustrator, just kind of forget about grouping. Uh, for now because grouping is great in Illustrator again I understand why you do it but uh, in Flash we're gonna go with a different uh, methodology here okay so now that we have a few hotkeys set up let's go over here to our preferences and sync settings might as well sync settings now well isn't that nice that hopefully we'll never have to sync things up or set up those hotkeys again I'm assuming when the next version of Flash comes out I don't have to do that Okay, so we'll click OK there, and uh, that's enough to get us started. So uh, uh, there you go for a little bit of an, an initial setup in uh, Flash and uh, some of my personal and I think essential hotkey um, preferences. And uh, we'll have plenty more to uh, talk about in uh, future videos.